Hey, Christ Community Church family, uh, welcome to Wednesday in the Word, a uh, weekly Bible study coming to you every Wednesday evening, um, a study led by one of our pastors, and uh, each week we're taking a look at one of the promises of Scripture and uh, diving in deep to take a look. And I hope you were uh, able to check out last week's video, Pastor Chase Hildebrand took a look at the promise in Joshua 1 verse 9. It's a great study. I hope that uh, if you missed it, you'll have a chance to uh, go back and look at that. Well, uh, this week, we're going to take a look at the promise of rest. The promise of rest. I wonder if you could use some rest in your life. Doesn't that sound amazing? Uh, well, take a look at this amazing text. A promise given to us by Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 11. If you have a Bible, go ahead and pull that out. And turn to Matthew chapter 11. We're going to look at this promise in verses 28 through 30. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Here's what Jesus says. He says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find Rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me read that one more time. Matthew 11, beginning in verse 28. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is is light. It's a promise of rest. Jesus will give us rest. Man, that's a great promise, especially in our fast-paced society and culture. Have you noticed, though, with the coronavirus shutdowns and social isolation and so forth, that uh, it's really made all of us slow down, and in so many ways, uh, we've been able to find more, perhaps, physical rest. I mean, all our evening activities have stopped, and many of our appointments on our calendars are now canceled, and a lot of people find themselves either working from home, or if they still go out to work, they come home and have really nothing on the calendar to do in the evening, and so much about life has just sort of settled down. The dust has settled, and maybe you even find yourself having more physical rest because you get a, you know, to redeem an extra 30 minutes because there's no longer any commute in the morning. Um, we find ourselves more physically rested. But here's the other thing. So many things shut down. Um, we also find ourselves spiritually a bit restless. I mean, when you don't have all of these things to distract you and all this busy pace to hide behind, uh, isn't it true that uh, you find in the quiet and the silences you're your, your real relationship with God is sort of exposed. Um, and maybe you find yourself in a place where you feel a bit restless spiritually, and you find that your walk with God was uh, a bit thin, uh, but before it had been masked by so much busyness. Um, because we have a restlessness that we sense, we need Jesus' promise of rest uh, more than ever before. Well, then what is this rest that Jesus gives uh, according to uh, these verses? What's this rest? Notice he says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What's the rest? Well, notice the rest is defined a little bit further down in verse 29. He says, You will find rest for your souls. Rest for your souls. So this rest that Jesus mentions here. Uh, seems to be not a physical rest, but more of a spiritual rest, a rest for our souls. It's a, a soul deep rest, an ultimate resting. You know, this concept of rest uh, has a rich biblical history. There's a biblical theological theme of rest that you can trace through all the way uh, through Scripture, starting in the beginning of the Bible all the way through the, to the end. Um, of course, in the creation account, God creates uh, the earth in six days, and on the seventh day, we read that God rested. Uh, once everything was put in place and everything was as it should be, God says it's very good, and God 
rests. Um, that rest was disrupted because of man's sin, the fall, the curse. But uh, as God redeems I Israel out of Egypt, he then gives them his law. And part of that law was uh, that they were to rest on the seventh day. Uh, that uh, seventh day of each week, they were to rest from all their work. And it was a, a picture to remind them of how God had rested and to send their minds forward to an ultimate salvation rest that God was bringing them toward. Fast forward even further and you find that uh, the promised land that Israel was headed toward was often described as a place of rest. In Deuteronomy and Joshua, the promised land is mentioned as rest. It was pictured as almost an ultimate place of finding or restoring that rest that man was created for in the beginning. Well, fast forward even further in your Bibles to the book of Revelation, where we discover that heaven is described as a place of rest. Um, let me read you from Revelation 14, verse 13. There we read, I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Heaven is described as a place where we rest from our deeds and we find ultimate rest in God for all eternity. Well, we don't have to wait, according to the Bible, for, for uh, final heaven uh, to find this rest. We can actually have this rest in God in the here and now. So I think of Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9 through 10, uh, where we read this, that uh, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for Whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works, as God did from his. So according to Hebrews chapter 4, biblical rest now is a sort of resting from our works to save us, and it's a resting in God's work to save us. And this drives us, of course, back to our passage in Matthew, where we discover this. This rest from God is discovered in a person. It's discovered in Jesus. Jesus is the one who offers us this ultimate soul-level salvation rest. He says, come to me and I will give you rest. Well, who should come? Who should come according to this, this passage? Verse 28, come to me, Jesus says, all who labor and are heavy laden, all who labor and are heavy laden. In other words, all of those who are tired because of their striving, because of their labor, all of those who are tired because of the burdens in life that they are carrying, presumably because they're trying to do God's commands, but they're trying to do them in their own strength. They're trying to labor and earn their own salvation in their own way, in their own efforts. Uh, this language here about carrying heavy burdens uh, is used later in the Gospel of Matthew when Jesus is talking to the Pharisee about the Pharisees and scribes. And he says that they are the kind of uh, religious leaders who are putting heavy burdens on the people, requiring the people to keep the Mosaic law in uh, overbearing ways. And so we read in uh, Matthew 23, beginning in verse 1. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So do and observe whatever they tell you, but not the works they do. For they preach, but do not practice. And here it is. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move them with their finger. So in that passage and in that context of Matthew, Jesus is saying the scribes and the Pharisees were taking the Mosaic law and the uh, commandments of God and they were adding their whole extra list of rules and regulations and requirements and commandments. And this was like a heavy burden that they were laying on the people's shoulders and saying, keep all of this in order to be put right with God. In contrast with that, Jesus says in our promise here in Matthew 11, Come to me if you're burdened and trying so hard to earn your way to God, trying so hard to find your identity and your performance through keeping 
God's commands and human commands and all the heavy burdens of legalistic performance. He says, come to me and I'll give you rest. So how does Jesus give us his rest then? Well, you have to go continue reading in the book of Matthew and you discover that Jesus himself lives a perfect life, keeping all of God's commands. Then Jesus goes up onto the cross as a substitute for sinners, bearing the penalty that our law-breaking deserves. He raises back to life, and now he offers salvation to anyone who will turn from their sin and put all of their trust in him. If they will trust him, they will find his rest of salvation. They can rest in the perfect status before God that he has earned by coming to him in faith. And so, if we will rest in Jesus for salvation, notice, following Jesus now, by faith, is not a heavy burden, but it's a delight. Notice he describes following him as a yoke. What is this yoke that's mentioned? Notice, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Well, some people have seen this yoke that Jesus describes as a reference to an animal yoke. You know, might, like you might have two oxen that are, have a yoke across their necks as they pull a heavy load. Um, that might be the reference. Perhaps Jesus is saying that he shares the load with us. But more than likely, this reference to a yoke is actually describing a human yoke. A yoke that would be worn across someone's shoulders in order to help them carry a heavy load on each end. So let me just put a uh, picture up on the screen, um, and you'll notice from this picture, you can immediately get the idea that a yoke was actually meant to help someone carry a heavy load a long distance because it um, uh, differentiated the weight across the yoke, allowing you to carry it well. Well, it's interesting that the Jewish leaders of Jesus' day and the rabbis of the time would often speak of the yoke of the law. In other words, God's law was like a yoke that you could wear as you obeyed it. And as we've seen, trying to keep the law for salvation is a heavy load to bear. But here Jesus says we can trade in that yoke of commandment keeping and instead we can trust in him keeping his commands, following him for our salvation, trusting in him. And he will give us rest as we carry his yoke. Because his yoke, as he says there in verse 30, is easy and his burden is light. You know, um, my kids are often trying to carry more than they're able. Um, as you know, I have five kids, a large family. We're often doing projects around the house. And whether we're doing some landscape out in the backyard or maybe we're moving some furniture in our home from place to place or maybe just carrying the dishes from the dining room table into uh, the sink to be washed. Uh, it seems like my kids are always trying to carry a little bit more than they're able. And so as their dad, I find myself oftentimes trying to say, you know what, let me, let me take that load that's too big for you, set that aside, and here, I'll hand you another load that you're able to carry. Just the other night, right, we're carrying dishes from the dining room table to the sink, and my youngest daughter was had her, her arms full with all these dishes. Uh, and, and I said to her, honey, you can't, you can't carry that load. That's too heavy for you. You're, you're going to crash some dishes on the floor. Set this down, and here, here's a plate and a cup. That'll be enough for you. As a dad, I never want to give my kids more than they can carry. Well, Jesus, I think, is using a similar metaphor here. He's saying we can trade in this heavy yoke that we were carrying with all of our self-salvation projects and all of our attempts to try and uh, earn favor before God through what we do and how we perform. And instead, he hands us an easy yoke. He hands us an easy burden that represents the lightness of following him where he's done everything we need for salvation, earned everything for us, and now gives us the gentle burden of living life under his gentle direction. And think about it as a Christian, knowing and following Jesus, you get to live every moment of your life with an awareness that God fully accepts and loves you in Christ. Right? You get to live every moment of your life with that hope 
of eternal life. No matter what you're going through, you know that the future is incredibly bright. As you journey through the Christian life, carrying the yoke of Jesus, uh, you have the help of God's Holy Spirit inside of you. You get the the benefit of God's Word, and, and you're reinforced with the help of God's church and Christian relationships to strengthen you. You can take on any challenge that you face in your life knowing that Jesus is the one who sends you through life and Jesus is the one who gives you just the right load that you can carry with his strength. Trade in your heavy yoke for the lighter burden of Christ. All right, so then let's uh, zoom out then from this wonderful promise of rest and boil this all down. What does it mean then to come to Jesus to take on his yoke and so to find rest for your soul. What does this promise mean? Two things, two applications here. Number one, resting in Jesus means putting your trust in Jesus for mm-hmm. salvation. Right? It means to trade in your yokes of performance and rule keeping and striving and taking on his yoke by finding all of your acceptance before God in him. If you've never put your trust in Jesus Christ, I... Uh, uh, I, I encourage you to see uh, that uh, coming to Jesus means that you find rest for your soul, both now for all eternity, trade in all your strivings for all that he has done for you. That's the first application. Put all of your trust in Jesus for salvation. Secondly, though, to rest in Jesus means to rest in him daily, right? He never gives us more than we can carry in him. Resting in him daily, it means taking his yoke upon you. It means to live all of your life for his glory. Live all of your life for his strength. Living all of your life under his tender care. He is gentle. He is lowly of heart, we're told in this wonderful promise. What a tender savior that he is. He cares about your every need. He cares about all that you're going through. So don't strive. Don't try to do things on your own and in your own strength. But come to him all your burdens, all your cares, hand them to him and carry the load that he gives to you as you follow him and whatever you're going through. He promises rest for your soul. What a treasure this promises for us in these difficult days, is it not? In economic hardships that we're going through, social distancing, uh, frustrations about all the different changes of life that all of us have faced in these recent days, as we in some ways find more physical rest and rest from a lot of our busyness, as in other ways we're exposed in the sense that we experience a sort of restlessness to our souls, with all the burdens that we may carry, we can rest in Jesus. He supplies the rest that we need. I hope you're encouraged by Jesus' promise of rest. Thanks for being with us as we've explored and studied this promise together. And I uh, hope that you'll take a look next week uh, for our Wednesday at the word, in the Word, as Pastor Tim Arrington leads us in another promise found in John 8:36. We look forward to seeing you then.